with grace and peace to you from grace and peace to you gathering here in lexington virginia i hope you're having a great day today's message is simple god loves you the subtitle would be God so loves you. He loves you in a splagzitsamai kind of way. That's the Greek word for a compassion that is deep. So deep that it moves to action. And it's that compassion that comes out of an agape love, the love that surpasses all other loves. That's the way God loves you. And a side topic would be that we all need love. We all need love. We all do. And when we realize that the creator of us, the king of kings, the lord of lords, loves us, it causes true change in our hearts. And this world needs true change, does it not? Look around. And another side topic in this message will be that the reality is God has to do something about the evil in this world. If there is evil. You can look around. And a lot of that comes from a messed up situation in the human heart. There are spiritual powers involved, but we also have a problem called sin. That is a human condition that Jesus Christ died for he who knew no sin became sin so that we might become the righteousness of God in him so he took care of that issue so much so that it says I love you so much even though you have this human condition that causes you to stray that causes you to run away from me and cause havoc toward one another wherein you don't love one another you can see that throughout history you can see that today there's so much of a problem with this human condition of hatred and division and destruction yet there is hope there is hope for the human condition and his name is Jesus and he loves you so much without further ado let's start in John 3:16 this has been used over and over it's at signs of football games it's been misused but here's the truth and I'm going to go further into John 3.16 I'm going to go on down to verse 21 for God loved the world in this way he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life now, before I read the rest, I want to give you a little footnote to why I'm talking about how much God loves you and how much he loves me. Uh, I saw a, a note that my daughter left for me here in the basement where I sit and meditate in God's word. And it was just a, a simple, I love you. And it just really meant the world to me. I needed to hear that, that particular day that I saw it. And I think we all need those reminders. And it was a greater reminder of how much God loves me. Despite my many flaws, despite my previous mistakes, despite how I will fall flat on my face again in the future, despite everything, God loves me. And he knows me very well, inside and out. He knows my thoughts. He knows my deeds. And yet he loves me. You can't beat that. So John 3.16. For God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only son. So that everyone who believes in him. Will not perish. But have eternal life. For God did not send. For God did not send. And this is a verse that people don't really look at. Verse 17. 
For God did not send his son into the world that he might condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. You see, the point in Jesus coming into this world was not to stomp on the sinner. It was to liberate, to free. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. That's what God's word says. Anyone who believes in Jesus is not condemned. But anyone who does not believe is already condemned because he has not believed in the name of the one and only Son of God. And that's our condition, unfortunately. But Jesus came to rectify that. Verse 19. Then this is the judgment. The light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than the light because the, their deeds were evil. For everyone who practices wicked things hates the light and avoids it so that his deeds may not be exposed. Think about that. But anyone who lives by the truth comes to the light so his works may be shown to be accomplished by God. Jesus Christ has brought the light. And his light has exposed the dark areas of my life that continually need to be brought before him. Exposed in such a real way that as a junior in high school I received his salvation because he illumined my eyes to see my need for a savior who loves me. I hope you see that today. I hope you see, feel, understand the splagzitsa my compassionate agape love of God for you through Jesus Christ. I pray his spirit helps you understand. Luke 7. We're going to look at Luke 7 and Luke 23 today. In Luke 7, soon afterward, Jesus, verse 11, so you can remember this, 7-11, you know, where you get a nice slushy, where my youngest son asked me for one about every other day when I pick him up from school. Luke 7 11. Soon afterward, Jesus was on his way to a town called Nain. His disciples and a large crowd were traveling with him. Just as he neared the gate of the town, a dead man was being carried out. He was his mother's only son, and she was a widow. So not only had she lost her husband, she lost her only son. A large crowd from the city was also with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. And that word is splagzitsamai, and it is the Greek for a heart-wrenching compassion that reaches to the innermost recesses of one's soul, making your guts turn inside out to the point that you've got to do something about it because you care so much for the other person. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion. He had splagzitsamai on her and said, Don't cry. Then he came up and touched the open coffin, which was a no-no. And the pallbearer stopped. And he said, Young man, I tell you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to speak. And my friends, we who have not known Jesus when we meet him we are like this dead man we stand up we see we can't help but talk about him we can't help but share the good news because he has brought that which is dead alive that which was lost is now found the dead man sat up and began to speak and Jesus gave him to his mother what love you see Jesus reversed this death, this tragic death. Not only has she lost her husband, but she lost her only son. What a tragedy. And what a tragedy it is for us to miss out on living life to the fullest because the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. 
But Jesus says, I have come to give life and life abundantly. And he proved it here. He proved his love here to this woman. And he proves it to you and I. This message is in God's word so we can understand how much he splugzitzamize us, how much he loves us with a gut wrench and compassion. And that is not just a touchy filly love, a fluffy woofy love. It is a love rooted in the heart of action. Fear came over everyone, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen among us, and God has visited his people. This report about him went throughout Judea and all the vicinity. Here's another place in God's word. We're standing in the book of Luke, the physician's accounts of Jesus. He was very detailed. And he caught Jesus' words on the cross and this is another splagzitza my understanding that we who have this condition called sin desperately need help so he's going to love us to spite us starting Luke 23 verse 32 two, two others criminals were also led away to be executed with Jesus when they arrived at the place called the skull they crucified him there along with the criminals and there were thousands upon thousands of people that the Romans crucified but Jesus is by far the famous along with the criminals one on the right and one on the left and then Jesus said get this Jesus said father forgive them because they do not know what they are doing my friend when we ignore the truth pointing to the existence of a God and that this God actually lived in history and that this God allowed himself to be crucified and take upon the sin of the world we really don't know what the heck we're doing because we are totally missing out on life to the fullest we are totally missing out on receiving a love like none other that is freely given to us by the sacrifice of God's son so this action here, Father, forgive them because they do not know what they are doing. It's just astronomical. And they divided his clothes and cast lots. The people stood watching and even the leaders kept scoffing. He saved others, let himself him sa He saved others, let him save himself. If this is God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him. They came offering sour wine and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. An inscription was above him. This is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals hanging there began to yell insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other answered, rebuking him. Don't you even fear God since you are undergoing the same punishment? We are punished justly because we're getting back what we deserve for the things we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom and Jesus said to him I assure you today you will be with me in paradise my friend do you want to experience love real love the agape love the splogzitamai induced compassion the heart wrenching inside out compassion that forces one the God of the universe the one to move to action, to die in your place, to give you a hope, to give you a life, and a life abundantly full of life. It's simple. All you got to do is say, Jesus, remember me. He already has, and he wants so desperately for you to come to him in the realization that you will be loved like none other has ever loved you or ever will. If you got questions about this message, feel free to contact me. Let me know how I can pray for you. Grace and peace to you from Grace and Peace to You Gathering.